Hi everyone, my name is Laura and welcome to Book Bubbler. Today I am doing the mid-year book freakout tag. I didn't do it last year, I don't know why, <laughs> but I'm doing it this year. I've loved watching everyone else's iterations of this, so I'm excited to do this one. Uh, this was started by Shammy at Read Like Wildfire, who I think is no longer active, and Earl Grey Books, so I will link them below if I can. Before I get started, since this might be a more viewed video of mine, I have a Goodreads question for you. Currently I have eight or nine or ten friend requests in my Goodreads. Um, I don't know who any of them are, but they all have the exact same message, and this has been happening for literal years on Goodreads. So if anyone knows what this means, please let me know. The message is lowercase hi, and there's a space, and 3096266. Am I clueless? Is this some kind of a weird trolling thing? I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I've been getting it for years. It's always drove me crazy. So if you guys know what the heck this means, could you please let me know in the comments? I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so to the tag. Number one, the best book you've read so far. This was really hard. I, I feel like my reading the last couple of years has been very average like nothing is really super outstanding this is i'm really passionate about there's stuff i really enjoyed and liked and stuff that i consider five star reads but not that many of them and i don't know if they would be qualified as the best book so the closest i could get was the third in the gunny rose series this is the russian cage by charlene harris number two the best sequel you've read so far i read a lot of sequels <laughs> Um, but I'm going to go with two of them because they're back to back. This is the Shetland series by Anne Cleves. Um, book number four, which is Blue Lightning, ends on a massive cliffhanger that goes right into book number five, Dead Water. Both excellent, both unbelievable. If you want to read them, you need to read the series in order because everything goes. Like characters are introduced, all this stuff. Um, but these two specifically, holy crap, like... I'm so glad that I didn't have to wait for publication <laughs> to happen and I could just go right from four to five. Really great mysteries too. She's got such, she's such a great writer. I mean, so yeah, four and five of the Shetland Island series for sure. Uh, number three, new release you haven't read yet, but want to. I have two books for that. Again, this is going to be very familiar to you guys, but Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell. <sighs> I just haven't gotten to it yet. And this book, which I forgot about, I forgot I pre-ordered it, and then it arrived last week. This is the 13th in the Ruth Galloway series, The Night Hawks by Ellie Griffiths. Um, Ruth is a forensic paleontologist. I always forget her title. Um, also the head of archaeology. Uh, it's set in Norfolk in England, and it's, yeah, Again, read the series in order, please. But, yep, looking forward to this very much. And my mom doesn't know it exists yet, but if she knew it existed, she'd be on me to read it immediately so she, so she could read it. Okay, number four. Most anticipated release for the second half of the year. <sighs> this year I'm out of the loop, quite honestly. I did look on my wish list, and I found two books. Number 17 in the Louise Penny series, The Badness of Crowds. Even though I'm four or five books behind, it doesn't matter. I always want the new Louise Penny. And <laughs> You've Got Red on You by Clark Collins. This is um, the story of how Shaun of the Dead came to be. I am really excited for this. I love Shaun of the Dead. So I think they're both out. Oh, I think Madness of Crowds is August. And I think You've Got Red on You. I, I want to say it's October. Please don't quote me, but looking forward to both of those. Okay, number five, biggest disappointment. Um, I wrote a book that I DNF'd because it was really disappointing. It's The Lost City of Z by David Gran. I like narrative nonfiction and I like a dual timeline, um, but something about his writing I just could not get into. It's always seemed like you were watching what was happening. I couldn't quite relate to him. There was so much speculation about everything. Understandably, I mean, no one does know what happened to all the explorers. But it just, and it was dragging and dragging and dragging. And I just, I, I watched the movie and I was like, oh, I just don't care. I fast forwarded through the movie too, so whatever. But that was such a bummer because I was really looking forward to that one. 
Okay, number six, biggest surprise. Becoming Duchess Goldblatt by Anonymous. Um, I'm not on Twitter, and I don't know why I picked this up at the library. I really, truly don't. I just saw it in the releases, and I thought, oh, let's see what this is like. And I was so delighted by what I read. She's very relatable. I'm assuming it's a uh, woman. Um, humorous, insightful. I really enjoyed it. Had no expectations, did know existed, and was delighted. Number seven, favorite new author. Mm. I wrote down Ellen Rankin, who wrote The Westing Game, which was published in like 77 or something. <laughs> so she's clearly a new to me author. <laughs> I know The Westing Game is a beloved childhood favorite for a lot of people. I just read it for the first time this year and really enjoyed it. Um, so I just wrote her. Otherwise, everyone else I really enjoyed, I have read before. Okay, questions eight and nine. I'm putting together because it's the same answer. So it's newest fictional crush and newest favorite character. And surprisingly for me, it's Turnip Fitzhugh from the Pink Carnation series by Lauren Willig. Turnip is in all of the books, I think minus the one that happens in India, Betrayal of the Blood Lily. Uh, but he's always in the background. He's um, a gentleman and he's friendly with everybody, but he's sort of a bumbling idiot. and. Everyone makes fun of him. People suspect him of being the Pink Carnation, the famous spy, because he likes wearing this waistcoat that's got Pink Carnations all over it. And he's been suspected of being a spy f from like the French and everybody else. And he just seems like a well-meaning doofus. But <laughs> in book number seven, I wanna say, we get his love story. You see, you see his point of view. And he is such a great guy. He's so nice and charming and sincere. Um, doesn't care what people say about him. He's just living his life and he is protective of his sister and his family and then of course his new love, who I liked her a lot too. I just I find him really delightful. For someone who was kind of always, oh there's Turnip, like rolling my eyes at, I'm like, oh Turnip. <laughs> really enjoyed him. Okay, number 10. A book that made you cry. Now some books get me choked up. I am a fairly easy crier. If I get overly emotional in any way, I just start crying. Like I, my friends, especially in college, make fun of me for it all the time. Um, so this did not make me cry, but it made me really emotional. That's Shrill by Lindy West. Whew. Related to this one on so many levels, especially as a fat person, this really hit home in so many ways. And so many things that I didn't realize were universal experiences, unfortunately, really are. And boy, this really did something for me. So got me choked up. I mean, I'm a little clumped right now, but didn't make me cry, just very powerful. And I really felt seen in a lot of ways reading this. A book that made you happy. That would be The Unhoneymooners by Lauren Willig. I always enjoy, Lauren Willig, see? <laughs> Christina Lauren. I always enjoy their work. I always have since their very first book, not the very first, their first romance, contemporary romance, came out, the Beautiful Bastard series. That was 15, 16, 18 years ago. Um, been a big fan ever since then, and Honey on Honey Murders was just funnier than I thought. It was really fun. It just made me happy. I read it in a day. Delightful. Okay, a favorite book that, favorite, sorry, book to film adaptation that you saw this year. I don't think I have seen any, so I can't answer that one. Number 13, favorite video you've done this year. Oh boy. None in particular, but I do really enjoy doing the mid-month book bash vlogs. I really like them, so I'm just going to say those vlogs in general once a month. Number 14, the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received. And I have to say it's this one. The Beginning of the World at the End of the Night by Jen Campbell. A little closer. I really like books with a bright blue background. I have found this out about myself. Didn't know it was a thing, but a lot of my favorite covers have a dark blue background. I keep meaning to do a favorite book covers video and it doesn't happen. I apologize. It will happen. Um, but I love the illustrations. I love how much detail there is in this. How in the anatomical heart itself, I love that it's anatomical, there are little hints of the story and plants and things that, I mean, I haven't read this yet, but I watched Jen um, here on booktube as you should. I recommend her very much. Um, I will link to her channel below. But I just, 
I really love this. I just love this. Mm. Beautiful. Love illustrations. And the last question, number 15, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? All of them. Um, however, more specifically, <laughs> this book I ordered um, for a readathon that was supposed to happen last weekend, not this past one, but the one before the last weekend in June. And I didn't get the book <laughs> until the Monday after. <laughs> so I really do want to read this. Um, and that is Orkney by Amy Sackville. This is fiction set on Orkney and a small island in Orkney um, in the Scottish Highlands. Highlands? Yeah, Hebrides. Hebrides. Wow. Wow. Um, so I hadn't heard of this until I saw this on Litzy. Um, and then I asked to join in and fully expected to read this in time because I thought I would have a copy and I didn't. Anyways, so for anyone who doesn't know what this is about, I'll read the back. On a remote island in Orkney, an eminent literature professor and his pale, enigmatic star pupil arrive for their honeymoon. Beneath the shifting skies of this untethered landscape, the professor watches his young bride slip ever further from his yearning grasp and begins to question the true nature of the woman he has married. So, this is, the reviews are amazing. I hadn't heard of it, but it just sounds so interesting. And I like the cover too. So I really do want to get to this one before the end of the year. And this is a group read. I am meant to be halfway through this right now. I have not read one single page. I did tab everything though. And that is A Promised Land by Barack Obama. I'm the worst. <laughs> so I'm supposed to be around page 400 by now, maybe 500. And I am just still, I haven't started it yet. There's no excuse. There really is not. I have read over 80 books so far this year. Clearly I could have worked this in and I just opted not to. Don't know why. So that's it. Um, if you want to do this tag, please do. I, I'm sure you've seen it. Everyone has been doing this tag like they do every year. It's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, feel free to do this yourself. If you do do this, let me know. And if you could let me know what the heck that Goodreads message thing is, I must be adult or something. I just don't get it. I don't know. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys are all doing well and um, staying cool or warm, depending on where you are in the world. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.